the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapters 18 through 20. In the days before electricity, people were used to living in darkness much of the time. But no one had ever known darkness like the deep dark that descended during Passover week nearly 2,000 years ago. Jesus had arrived in Jerusalem to shouts and cheers. Hosanna! 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 Blessed is the King! Hosanna! 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 But the religious leaders had been plotting a way to get rid of Jesus, and they had found the perfect way to get to him through one of his closest followers, Judas. What will you give me if I hand Jesus over to you? For 30 pieces of silver, Judas promised to betray Jesus, the light of the world. Darkness was coming, but Jesus wasn't surprised. After a special Passover meal with his friends, he told them. In a little while, you will no longer see me. Then after a little while, you will see me. Jesus led his friends across the Kidron Valley to a garden called Gethsemane. This very night, you will all turn away because of me. Peter hurried to step right up beside Jesus. Uh, uh, all the others may turn away because of you, but I never will. In the garden, Jesus pleaded with God in prayer. <sighs> My father, is it possible for this cup to be taken away? <sighs> but if I must drink it, may what you want be done. His friends couldn't stay awake long enough to pray with Jesus. But soon, the dim silence of the garden was broken. A mob of soldiers and officials streamed into the garden, carrying flaming torches. Judas marched right up at the front and led them straight to Jesus. Who do you want? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. At first, everyone fell back, but then they surged forward to grab Jesus. Peter tried to defend him with the sword, but Jesus stopped him. Put your sword away. Shouldn't I drink the cup of suffering the Father has given me? Jesus was tied up and taken to the high priest for questioning. Panicked, his friends fled into the darkness, except for Peter and John, who followed at a distance. Peter waited outside in the courtyard while John slipped inside. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? Peter, afraid for his life, froze. I am not. <laughs> Inside, Jesus was put on trial and lied about by fake witnesses. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so. From now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One. He has spoken an evil thing against God. Outside, others asked Peter if he was a friend of Jesus. Twice more, he said. I am not! Jesus' own friends had abandoned him. Even as bleak morning light grew, darkness continued to gather. Because the Jewish leaders couldn't sentence anyone to die, they sent Jesus to the Roman governor, Pilate. What charges are you bringing against this man? He has committed crimes! Pilate questioned Jesus himself. Are you the king of the Jews? My kingdom is not from this world. I was born and came into the world to be a witness to the truth. Everyone who is on the side of truth listens to me. Pilate returned to the crowd. I find no basis for any charge against him. Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate was afraid of the Jewish leaders who could get him in trouble with the Emperor Caesar. So he gave in, and Jesus was beaten. A crown of sharp thorns was pressed into his head and he was handed over to the soldiers to be crucified. You! Carry this! Jesus was forced to drag the heavy beams of his own wooden cross through the streets of Jerusalem to a barren hill outside the city walls, Golgotha. Jesus' arms and legs were nailed to the rough cross using heavy spikes. Then, the cross was raised up to stand between two other crosses holding thieves. 
Even though it was the brightest part of the day, darkness began to close in. Must be a storm coming in. Jesus' mother, along with a few of his followers, looked on, their hearts breaking. Around mid-afternoon, Jesus cried out. My God! My God! Why have you deserted me? It is finished. Then, Jesus bowed his head and died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. The darkness of despair settled into the hearts of Jesus' friends. His body was taken to a nearby garden and placed in an empty tomb. A heavy stone was rolled in the way to block the entrance. Soldiers were even sent to stand guard during the long, dark night. But even in the deepest darkness his world had ever known, God was still at work. Early on Sunday, even before the sun rose, Jesus' friend, Mary Magdalene, crept to the entrance of the tomb. But when she got to the entrance, the heavy stone had been rolled away. It's... it's empty. Confused, Mary raced to find Peter and John. They too saw the empty tomb and returned home, still trying to understand. Mary stayed behind in the slowly growing light. Tears filled her eyes as she bent into the tomb to see once again. Oh! Two bright angels dressed in white sat where Jesus' body had been laid. Mary turned back to the garden, her breath catching in her throat. The rising sun nearly blinded her, but she could see a man standing there. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? At first, Mary thought this must be a gardener, but then he spoke again. Mary. Teacher! It was Jesus, alive! Mary threw herself at his feet. As the light grew around them, Jesus told her, Do not hold on to me. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary raced to find the others. I have seen the Lord! Through Jesus, God had defeated death forever. We can hope, because in the end, Darkness will never win.